स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया welcome students in today's class we are going to talk about some more properties of harmonic function so properties of harmonic function of harmonic function right up till now we have seen certain properties of harmonic functions right i mean uh, you have i think you have a idea about uh, these kind of function they are very very special in the sense that i know mean value property that property is something which only harmonic functions possess right so first property which you have seen and we have seen that this is a very important property is called a mean value property mean value property uh, holds only for harmonic functions only for harmonic functions right this is what we harmonic functions and this is very important because we have seen that uh, i mean you can prove strong maximum principle out of it and you also saw that the strong maximum principle holds right this also holds so essentially you see and to prove strong maximum principle we have again used mean value property today we will see more uh, you know applications of mean value property and essentially that will give you more properties of harmonic function so one of the main idea about harmonic function is so let's see see we did not exactly solve any laplace equation to find the harmonic function we just uh, i mean definitely you see if laplace and let's say If Laplacian e equals to zero, yeah, in some domain omega. Of course, without solving this thing, you guys already know that e equals to constant is always a solution. Always a solution. That's always there, right? A solution, irrespective of what omega e. Yeah, and of course, you can also find a solution which looks like this. It is x square minus y square. That sort of thing will also work, right? This is also harmonic. Is also harmonic. Harmonic. And similarly, uh, I mean simple functions. Let's say I mean uh, alpha x plus beta y. That sort of linear functions. Huh? So essentially, if you take here alpha beta is in R. Huh? So uh, if you take alpha to be zero, u x y is just y beta times y. And if you take uh, alpha to be one, beta to be zero, u x y is basically just the x coordinate, right? So essentially, what am I trying to say? These are all harmonic functions, right? and you do not have to worry about where they are harmonic. They are always harmonic. Okay. harmonic now the point is this so we have already found out three different sort of functions so this this is like a constant function this is a i mean linear function this is a quadratic one right and uh, i mean you can go on doing this thing but the thing is uh, so you do understand there is like a huge variety of harmonic functions here yeah? now the question is this how does i mean without solving this thing so it is you do understand that it is definitely not possible to find all possible harmonic functions like this right so without solving it how can we say what are the properties that harmonic functions possess you understand an arbitrary harmonic function not a special one so the question basically boils down to this okay given an arbitrary harmonic function an arbitrary harmonic function harmonic function okay what properties can you expect what properties properties can one expect okay and it turns out that harmonic functions are very very special in that sense yeah so because we saw that there is something called the mean value property which holds and there is something called the strong maximum principle which holds huh? there are other properties also like this and we have also saw that there is something called positivity which is just a application of strong maximum principle yeah that holds for harmonic functions too yeah today we are going to prove something different yeah uh, a different form of property so maybe i can just do it here yeah? maybe i can do it here so uh, the thing is this this is very important it's called a regularity okay what it means is this see let me do the motivation over here now think of a function let's say laplacian u equals to 0 yeah whatever it is in omega let's say yeah 
zero what sort of function is this this is basically a c2 function you can think of this is a continuous function right i mean you don't worry about all that it is basically a continuous function yeah? so whenever you are solving this problem you are basically saying that you are looking for so essentially we are looking for looking for u such that u x x plus u y y equals to zero yes so essentially you are or you can also think of this like u x x equals to minus u y y right yes so essentially you see uh, if you if you just look at this property what it says is you are looking for a function such that the double derivative like this u x x plus u y y okay that is zero which is a continuous function right it's a continuous function so basically you are looking for a function whose double derivative the sum of double derivative u x x plus u y y that those two derivative if you sum it up that is a continuous function so definitely i mean uh, without loss of generality yeah? i mean we can safely say it's not like it is always going to happen but we can say that i mean we can assume that uh, essentially we are looking for a function such that u x x and u y y are continuous right are continuous we can safely say that uh, and such that this happens such that u x x is equals to minus u y y okay this is what we need to find now if something like this happens okay so what does that say about you that says that at least these two derivatives must exist the double derivatives must exist and they are continuous right that's what it means to say so essentially you can think of this u to be c2 of omega right yeah that implies that u has to be c2 of omega of course it may not be c2 of omega it can be much less than that but we can safely say that at least u is c2 of omega and that is where our definition our motivation of solution is so let's say if we say that uh, there is a solution uh, to this problem laplacian u equals to zero what does that mean it means that you are basically looking for a c2 function you are basically looking for a c2 function which satisfies the equation so maybe i can uh, do it here a little bit solution so let's say laplacian of u equals to f in omega yeah and u equals to let's say g on the boundary okay we say let's say that is your one we say we say u in c2 omega is a solution i will take c2 omega bar okay or i mean you can also take c2 omega intersection c omega bar but that's not about i mean for now let's just okay uh, maybe we can do it better huh? let's let's do it better so we say u in c2 omega intersection c omega bar is a solution of one of one if so let's take minus laplacian u minus laplacian there is nothing special about minus you understand it can be positive negative you can just adjust it here huh? if this happens this is equals to f of x for all x in omega clear and u of x equals to g of x for x on the boundary clear okay so basically you are looking for a c2 function in the interior of the domain omega so omega in omega it is has to be c2 on the boundary it is continuous so it is assumed that f and g are continuous functions okay we are just always assuming f and g are continuous are continuous okay right so essentially you see whenever we are saying something is a solution we are always assuming that it is c2 solution now what does regularity say regularity is a very important property in pd study what it says is this so it says that uh, is it really a c2 function i mean can you comment more on how smooth it is see i mean from intuition it is very clear right that uh, let's say a function which is let's say u is in continuous in some interval i let's say i think yeah and let us assume that u is c1 in the interval i okay yeah i mean vaguely speaking not very mathematically but vaguely speaking just think of the regularity of this regularity means i mean think of this as a how smooth these functions can be okay so you realize that uh, i mean a function which is continuous may look like this no okay whereas a function which is c1 will never look like this okay so a function which is continuous may look like this yes 
but the function which is c1 will not look like this yeah so you understand that there will be some some a small you know the smoothness is there yeah it will be smooth it, it won't suddenly you know turn around and i mean you understand what i'm trying to say so basically the, uh, at every point there are some tangent vectors yeah and uh, now you realize that the more regularity so let's say uh, a function which is c infinity of omega okay that is very regular right so at every point there are tangent vectors and you can do all sorts of things so every derivative has tangent vectors and that sort of thing right so they are very smooth functions so essentially the question is this whenever we say something is a regular uh, we talk about regularity of pd we mean that let's say that it is in certain space huh? let's say u is in some x okay can that imply that u is in some y where y is contained in x is it clear so essentially uh, what i'm trying to do is this let us assume that uh, i mean you, you have when you are you are starting to find a solution you are starting to find it in a bigger set x okay of course i mean if you want to find something i mean it's better to take the set big and big so that the, the chances of getting a solution is much more right okay now once you have found it in a bigger set now the question is is it also in the smaller set yeah the smaller set is a most exclusive set right we also want it to be in a smaller set so that you know it enjoys much more properties okay so essentially first of all the idea is this first you prove it for you show that the uh, thing is for bigger set and then you show i mean first you show that it, it holds for a bigger set yeah and then somehow you show that if it works for the bigger set i mean does it work for a smaller set also which is contained in a bigger set okay because you understand smaller set is much exclusive huh? it it enjoys much more properties okay so this is the idea of regularity so what does regularity say so if if u which is continuous in omega okay satisfies satisfies the mean value property mean value property okay mean value property you remember for every for every ball bxr contained in omega then you can say that u is in c infinity of omega okay now uh, what i want you to do is this now for now okay just take 5 seconds then think about what it say it is saying essentially so let me explain to you and then just think about it it is saying that first of all you start with a continuous function okay no c2 nothing you just start with the continuous function the biggest set which you can think of yeah so you remember this thing right continuous function in omega is the biggest set which contains c1 of omega clear which contains c2 of omega and all of this contains c infinity of omega so function which is in c infinity is also in all of this set right so note okay so essentially what am i saying is this you start with a function which is continuous in omega okay now of course not every function which is continuous is in c infinity i mean um, fx equals to mod x is an example right uh, that is in c uh, that is uh, continuous but not in c1 correct on minus 1 1 if you take omega to be minus 1 1 so essentially what am i saying is this you start with a continuous function such that the mean value property holds please remember this thing this is so important whenever we say something is mean value property holds you guys already know this. once mean value property holds it's going to be a harmonic function right so it says that and we are not talking about any harmonic function here we are just saying that you start with a continuous function such that it so you know it satisfies the mean value property what is the mean value property let me again remind you what is the mean value property it says that um, let's say u at the point x not this if you want to evaluate so basically let's say given a function we say that the function satisfies the mean value property so maybe i can just put it uh, here okay okay so essentially let me write it down uh, we say that the function satisfies the mean value property if for any x not in omega we can write it like this right b x not uh, r u of y d of y right or we can also write that the boundary x not r u 
of z ds of z right where this is the uh, surface uh, measure we say i mean if you do not know measure theory you can just think about it as uh, the i mean the integration with respect to the surface right okay so essentially uh, just take 5 seconds and think about what this property says it says that the continuous function with this property then it will just take it inside this uh, set you understand if you skip all that once it satisfies the mean value property continuous function satisfy um, uh, will i mean end up in this set okay just think about it for 5 seconds and we'll come back what is the mean value property the mean value property says that if f is continuous in omega clear so we start with a continuous function f yes and we say that that satisfies the mean value property if for any x not in omega such that you have a small ball which is contained in omega c of course for any x not you will have something like this yes why because omega is an open set and every point is an interior point so essentially any point you can just put a ball inside omega right so you just take any ball i mean it does not matter whatever it is yeah such that there exist r positive for which for which uh, b of x not r is contained in omega we have the value of f at a at point x not is the average is the average of f over b x not r yeah or the average of f over the boundary yes okay so that's your mean value property we already know and the regularity theory says that once you have a u which is continuous in omega yes and it satisfies the mean value property for every ball which is contained in omega then you can show that u is not only continuous but it is infinitely differentiable that's a huge claim here yes so again let me emphasize it is saying that a continuous function so with this property is infinitely differentiable so huge property okay how do you prove this thing so to prove is not very difficult actually we will use um, modifiers to do this thing so proof proof okay how do you prove it so um, let let eta be the radial function radial function what we we have proved uh, earlier huh? the radial function okay and set u epsilon to be so this is the definition which i am writing here this is eta epsilon convolution u okay so essentially what am i doing is this see i am uh, you have to show u is in c infinity of omega right so you take i mean you take a you show that u is actually what we will do with this we are not going to directly attack you u what we are going to do is we are going to show that you can actually uh, identify u with a c infinity function in, inside omega is it clear okay and what is that c infinity function that is u epsilon this is what we need to find so what we are doing is we are modifying u okay in omega epsilon okay so basically uh, what where where omega epsilon is the set of all those x in omega such that the distance between x and the uh, bounded radial omega is greater than epsilon okay so essentially what am i saying i am saying that omega epsilon okay it should be such that it must contain so essentially let's say that your omega yes yeah? and omega epsilon mm, is the domain which is like an epsilon distance from omega okay so this is your omega epsilon yeah so what am i saying is i want i first of all i have prove i, I will define a set uh, a function u epsilon which is defined on omega epsilon right and that is defined as eta epsilon convolution u and uh, we say if you remember we say u epsilon is the modifier okay sorry is the smoothing of u okay so using a modifier so you see you remember eta we start with a radial function eta and we define eta epsilon as a modifier right okay
it has selen as a modifier and uh, you see um, uf selen is the smoothing of u so basically uf selen if you define it like eta epsilon convolution u okay then uh, basically what happens to the area u epsilon you know that u epsilon is a smooth uh, we say it is a smoothing of u and essentially u epsilon is so uh, that in or in other words what u epsilon is in c infinity omega epsilon is this clear what am i saying first of all again let me explain to you we are starting out with a radial function we did it earlier right we started out with a radial function we will always denote it by eta and we write it and we set this eta is a radial function which you i mean sometimes they call it a modifier but essentially for now we just call eta epsilon as a modifier i mean it doesn't matter but okay so modifier is what it actually let's say you have some uh, problem somewhere so like uh, you know sudden bends or something like this yeah what eta epsilon does is when you convolute u with eta epsilon that particular function which you, here we are defining at u epsilon that particular function will be defined in this set okay u omega epsilon it is not defined everywhere it is defined in omega epsilon such that the, this particular function is extremely smooth it is c infinity clear now what we will show is in fact this u epsilon is equals to u in omega epsilon yeah and since epsilon is arbitrary i mean it can be as small as you want essentially what we can do is we can show that u epsilon is equals to u so let's just prove this thing yeah so let let x is in omega epsilon right then u epsilon of x okay it is the convolution if you remember so this e epsilon of x this we define right so it is eta epsilon of x minus y u of y dy okay so that is given by 1 by epsilon power so this is just i am just writing what eta epsilon is here yeah? there is nothing special about it b of x epsilon eta of mod x minus y by epsilon eta of y dy clear this we can do this is equals to i can write it like this so you remember this is a radial function please sorry i made a small mistake here this is u of y hmm? okay now this is a radial function eta and I am integrating it on b of x. So you remember for any function f, a nice enough function, when you integrate on b of x star, it essentially means that you integrate between 0 to epsilon eta of mod x minus r. So um, let me write it like this r by epsilon. I will explain to you what we are doing, okay? Integral uh, del b x star x r u of z d s of z okay and uh, d of r okay you re if you remember see essentially what we are doing is for a integrable function f integral if you want to do between this f yeah um, something dz let's say fz dz yeah what we basically can do is first of all see we are integrating between v x not r so just think of this like if you want to you know measure the width of a, a trunk a section of a trunk of a big tree what you do you just look at one ring yeah? first of all integrate on one of the ring and after that extend the ring from zero to infinity right so essentially what am i saying is this something like this let's say i want to integrate in this whole region yeah what uh, and we center here what I can do is, first of all, let, let us look at the value of the function in this particular ball, okay, for an arbitrary ball like this, yeah, which is inside this, with the same center. And after that, if I take the radius of the ball from 0 to whatever the radius of this particular thing is, then I can map the whole thing, right? I can span the whole thing. So essentially, this will turn out to be 0 to r, yeah, del b x r, you understand? f of um i mean something huh? f d s of s and uh, dr yes okay 
maybe I can write it as epsilon. Huh? I mean, there is nothing special. Let's write it as epsilon. Yeah? That will be better. Okay. So essentially, what am I doing? I am taking the integral over this. Uh, I mean, uh, the surface. And after that, I'm just extending the surface from zero to infinity. That will give you the whole volume. Okay. Right. So this is what we are doing. Now you see, where is X? X is in the center. Where is Y? Y is on the boundary. Right. And what is the distance between X and Y? That is basically R. So that is why this R, I mean, I can just put R here. Mod X minus Y is basically R. Okay. Is it clear? X is in the center y is on the boundary right y is on the so essentially this thing i can write it as bxr right and xr what is r r is varying between 0 and epsilon so for every fix every fix r okay what is essentially happening is y is on r initially this is your r see think of this this is your epsilon this is any arbitrary r. This r varies between 0 and epsilon. So r can be here, r can be here, r can be here. Huh? It extends. For a fixed r, this is x center and y is here. So x minus y is the r. So that is why I just put it off r by epsilon. And again, integral over this ball u of z ds of z dr. Clear? Okay. That will give you 0 to epsilon. If you remember, what is it? C. Uh, for any r, okay, x is on uh, the domain omega, right? Okay, and r is lies in, lies between zero and epsilon. So essentially, del b x lies in omega here, and that is why this is basically from mean value theorem. The value of this is u of x here. So I can write it as u of x, okay, and this is eta of r by epsilon. Okay, this whole thing is u of x, so I have to keep it outside d of r. Clear? Okay, uh, I am missing something. I am missing the um, value here. So this is n alpha n r power n minus 1 dr, right? That will come if you remember. So this is the, this is the average, right? The average part should be there. Okay. Mm. Why? Because you see, uh, del b xr u of z dz, this is, uh, the average is there. So that uh, gets multiplied here. So that will be the uh, surface area of the ball, which is n alpha n r power n minus 1. Okay. And uh, what is it? u of x. Right. So that is what I'm just putting it here. Yes. Now, once I do this, what happens? You can you can calculate this thing. This will become b um, zero epsilon. Okay. I whatever we did here, we are just reversing it back. Okay. Eta epsilon dy. Okay. If you are not convinced, start with this thing. Eta epsilon. You just integrate it. Eta epsilon is a radial function. If you integrate it on b zero epsilon, you will get this thing. Right. Okay. So please check this part. I mean, please check this part. This is the radial integration of radial function. Okay, from here to here. So integration of radial function. Okay. So this happens, and we already know what is the integral of eta epsilon over a ball. This is one. So essentially, this actually comes up to be e of x. Clear? Yeah? So thus, what did we prove? Thus, we prove that u epsilon, okay, is equivalent to u, right? u epsilon of x is equal to u x in omega epsilon, clear? Therefore, u is c infinity in omega epsilon, okay, for each epsilon positive. Why? Because u epsilon by definition, u epsilon is a mollifier. I mean, so it's a smoothing of u. So essentially, u epsilon is the infinity of omega epsilon. So if u is equal to u epsilon in omega epsilon, okay, that will give you that u is the infinity on omega epsilon for each epsilon, and hence, and hence, u is the infinity of omega. Okay. 
So one small remark which I want to make is this. Note that we are not saying saying u is c infinity omega bar. Okay, we are not saying that. So basically, uh, it may not be it may not be c infinity up to the boundary. Is this clear? What am I saying? It may not be c infinity up to the boundary. What we can say is inside, inside the domain, it is always c infinity. On the boundary, it may not be c infinity. Is this clear? Okay. So please uh, remember this thing. Right. So now what we are going to do is, so essentially what we learned is any function, continuous function satisfying the mean value property is c infinity. Okay. Now we are going to prove an estimate, which is an extremely important estimate is called the estimate on derivatives. Okay. Mm, so another property estimate on derivatives. Estimates on derivatives. Okay. What does this say? It says that assume let u is harmonic in omega clear then the following happens it's a very very important property okay then what happens is b alpha of u of x clear this is less than equals to ck by r power n plus k integral b x naught r mod u Okay, I mean, of course, you can write u of x dx, but anyways, I mean, um, I don't care. I mean, you can write it huh? if you want. Okay, let's just write it. If you want, uh, it's better. Uh, I'm not writing all the times d of x and all. Yes, uh, I'm pleased to understand that. Okay, so essentially, what am I saying is this. Sorry, it has to be x not. Okay, uh, what am I saying is. From the earlier estimate, what do we know? That any harmonic function, see, a continuous function satisfies the mean value property is basically saying harmonic function. So any harmonic function is C infinity, right? So uh, say u is harmonic in omega, yeah? Then you can take any derivative, d alpha of u x naught. Definitely that is true, right? Because it is C infinity. So you take any derivative d alpha of u x naught and that you can bound it by C k, some constant C k by r power n plus k. This is very important. And the integral of u over b x naught r. Clear and this holds for each ball d x naught r which contains in omega, okay, and for each multi index multi index alpha such that mod alpha equals to. K. If you remember multi indexes, okay, so those, those basically are used to write down the derivative, okay. So for all multiple index up till k, so dk of u, if you just write it like this, dk of u, that is always bounded by the k derivative of u, that is always bounded by ck r power n plus k, the integral of over u, um, integral of u over the ball, okay. Now, do you think the integral is defined? Of course, it is defined. Why? Because it is the same infinity function, it's a smooth function over a uh, ball, right? So the integral is defined. Here, one thing, what is ck? So c naught is very important. This is 1 by alpha n. Huh? And what is alpha, 1 by alpha n? 1 by alpha n is the, if you remember, this is the volume of the unit ball in Rn. Yes, it is the volume of a unit volume Rn. And uh, what is uh, Ck? Ck is 2 power n plus 1. Okay, it is just some calculation. I mean, don't, you don't need to get intimidated by anything. I will explain to you why this all of this is coming and what is so important here. K equals to 1, 2. Okay, so essentially what it is saying is you see, in PD, this is a very important aspect of PD. So let's say given any PD, 
I mean, not any PD, most of the PDs, what you want to do is you need to, uh, let's say, uh, without knowing the solution, what exactly is the solution, we want to know the, we want to know how the solution behaves. Yeah. From here, let, let us assume that this is true, right? Let us assume that this is true. We did not prove it. Let us assume this, this is true. If this is true, what can you say? Think about it. What can you say about the behavior? So let's say if you can take the balls as big as possible. Let's say you can take the balls as big as possible, right? Okay. So in RN, if you are working, you can take the balls as big as possible. What can you say about the behavior of D alpha? That it, uh, you know, it is always bounded by this. So the growth, what it means is the growth of U, yeah, at that point, if you just look at the derivative, the alpha derivative, so this is the case derivative of uh, u. The growth e cannot is always controlled by r by r to the power n plus k. Is this clear? Okay. So it depends on the ball in which ball you are looking at. What is the radius of the ball? And with the radius, there is a direct relation between these two. The growth is always controlled here. That is what it is saying. Okay. So let us uh, prove this thing, and uh, the proof is very easy. Yeah. We will also see a very very important. I mean, this may not look much. The, but let me put it this way here. Yeah. So this is a star candidate. Let's just put it like this. I mean, here most of the things are very important, but this is a star candidate. Huh? Very, very important. Very, very important. Okay. Uh, this estimate. So how do you, I prove this thing? So essentially, you see, I have to prove it for all K, right? K is a natural number. So, so the most natural thing to do to prove something like this is to use induction. Yeah. So let's just do it for K equals to zero. So, uh, proof, proof, what happens for k equals to 0, if you, can you guys tell me what happens, just think about it, what happens in k equals to 0. For k equals to 0, mod alpha is 0, if mod alpha is 0, essentially you are looking at only u of x. So, if basically if u is harmonic, let's just write it down, if u is harmonic, u of x, how can you write u of x? Yeah. If u is harmonic, u of x can be written as let's say x naught can be written as integral b x naught r u of z dz right that's what we can write it like this now if we can do it like this and of course r is such that b x naught of r is contained in omega we are always assuming that okay yeah now th if this happens then we can say that mod of u x naught therefore is less than equal to the volume of this thing which is 1 by alpha m r power m clear and um, integral u of z dz over b x naught r the mod of this yeah so this is you can of course always write it as 1 by alpha n r power n integral b x naught r mod of u of z dz i am i think you guys all of you guys know because integral mod integral of f is always less than equal integral of mod f yeah that is always true okay so if that happens you see this is true right this is true now if this is true what is 1 by alpha n that is defined by c naught so this is c naught by r power n integral b x naught r mod u z dz right yes see this is the same thing which we proved which is k equals to 0 c co c 0 by r power n k equals to 0 r power n integral mod u over the ball so this is what i wrote here so this is what it is yeah so for k equals to 0 it is true so hence hence star is true for k equals to 0 okay now what happens when k equals to 1 let's just see you now for k equals to 1 for k equals to 1 uh, we have observe this particular thing observe see if u is harmonic u has infinite derivative right to work with so if u is harmonic observe if u is harmonic in omega that implies u of xi is also harmonic 
in omega for i equals to 1 to n is this clear what am i saying see what i am saying is this is a very you know uh, quirky result it says that if u is harmonic if laplacian u equals to 0 then you can take the derivative of u of x y if you just think of laplacian of u of x y you can show that even that is zero okay so u is harmonic it means that u of x y is also harmonic okay and therefore if u of x y is harmonic u of x y satisfies the mean value property right so what you can do is you can write u of x y at the point x naught that is equals to integral v x naught r by 2 u x i mm, i don't know maybe we'll write down dx okay so that is this now if this is true yeah so this is mean value property yeah please remember mean value property i am using mean value property why i can use because i have um, i mean if u is harmonic u of x i is also harmonic right if u of x y is harmonic then u of x y also satisfies the mean value property and that is what i am using on u of x y not on u okay so from here this uh, you take the integration by part okay if you remember your integration by part this is equals to 2 to u or n by alpha n r power n okay see uh, here i am just writing it down huh? i am just breaking it down what is the volume of the ball it is basically alpha n r power n here r is r by 2 that is why just this is okay and that um, i can just write it down as del v x naught r by 2 okay and u gamma i dx i uh, i think it is quite clear how this is coming this is indication by part if you remember gauss divergence or you can just write it as gauss divergence theorem yeah yeah we did this so integral over the ball uh, of u x i is basically u dot gamma i over the boundary of the ball clear now this i can write it as less than equals to 2 n by r okay mm, the maximum of module over the boundary x naught r by 2 okay let's just think about it how we can do it see here if i mean just take the maximum u is a continuous function right yes u is a continuous function in omega i am looking on only let's say that's your x naught okay and this is r by 2 so i'm only looking at this portion of the domain if u is continuous definitely i mean in, uh, this this ball del b x naught r by 2 that is a closed bounded set right Hence, it is compact, continuous function compact set, there is a maxima, I will take that maxima out. If I take that maxima out, essentially what do I have? 2 to power n, alpha n, r power n, and integral over del b x naught r by 2. This is gamma i. If I just dominate it, it is basically dominated by 1, right? Gamma is the unit outward normal, if you remember, yeah? So, uh, I, I, gamma i, this is gamma i, yeah? Unit outward normal. So this is this you guys already know. So I'm just not writing it here. This is d of s. Yeah. Now two to the power n alpha n r power n. This is basically the volume of this. So basically the surface area of this thing. What is the surface area of this? It is n alpha n r by two whole power n minus one. Right. That's what the surface area of this particular thing is. So if you calculate this thing there is 2n alpha and alpha n is getting cancelled right and you have 2n by r and uh, the maximum of u is always there okay so this is there now see if del b x naught r by 2 okay contains x let's say this contains x then the ball b with center x and radius r by 2 is contained in the ball with center x naught and radius r which is contained in omega yes this is quite clear because the difference you see uh, the difference between x and x naught the difference between x and x naught the maximum distance is between r by 2 
right? So I can just take a ball which center uh, at x and radius r by 2, which is contained in Bx not r, yeah? And of course, that is contained in omega, yeah? Therefore, what we can say is u of x, yeah, is less than equals to 1 by alpha n 2 by r whole power n, okay, integral module v x not r, right? So, this, this you can say, yeah, I hope this is fine. Why you can say this thing? Why you can say this? Because this is uh, the mean value property, right? From mean value property, we can say this thing, right? I mean, this is just we proof for k equals to 0. Yeah, for k equals to 0, we just proof. So, for k equals to 0. So this is what I'm writing. For any x, please remember, uh, the difference here is this. Here, we proof it for mod u of x naught can be written like this, okay? What I'm saying is here, for any x, yeah? such that b x r by 2, which is contained in b x naught r, we can write it like this. Is this clear? Okay. So, once this is true, you combine these two properties, uh, the earlier property, this property and this property. Once we combine these two, we get mod d alpha of u at the point x naught. Okay. This is less than equal to n plus 1 n by alpha n times 1 by r power n plus 1, okay, u l1 of b x naught r, clear, okay. So, combine this and this, so for any x such that this happens, u of x can be bounded by this and um, so we use this property here. So, this is less than, you take the maximum here, the maximum will also be bounded by this. So, essentially what am I saying? I am saying that mod u of x y at the point x naught can be bounded by 2n by r times this whole thing, right? And that is why this thing is fine. Okay. So, we have proved it for k equals to 1. Now, what you need to do is you need to prove it for an arbitrary, uh, you know, k, let's say. m equals to 1 I have proved. m equals to 0 by mean value property, m equals to 1 we proved. Now, we will just have to show for m equals to an arbitrary k, let's say, yeah, and uh, this thing is exactly the same thing, whatever we did earlier, okay, whatever the, the exact idea, whatever we did for k equals to 1, the exact idea will work, okay, so I am going to skip this part, so for an arbitrary m equals to arbitrary k, uh, the above logic can be modified. Logic can be modified, okay, to achieve the required result. Is this clear? Okay. So, for an arbitrary k, I mean, we are doing induction, right? For an arbitrary k, you just think of it like it holds for k minus 1 and make, do it for k. What you need to do is exactly whatever we did for k equals to 1. The exact same sort of thing will work. Huh? You just have to change things a little bit, okay? But this is um, for yourself. So, please check this part. Huh? We are, I am not going to do this, okay? This, this is not very difficult, the same kind of thing. And you should be able to do this thing, yeah? Okay. Now, we show another property, another property of harmonic function. This is a very important property and I am quite sure all of you guys already know this property. This is called the uh, Liouville, Liouville theorem, okay? So, by from complex analysis, you guys know that if a function is a holomorphic function, then the real and imaginary part are harmonic, right? And uh, uh, you can show that uh, there's a Liouville theorem in complex analysis which says that um, bounded entire functions are constant, yeah. So, it is exactly the same thing, but only in the real case, okay. So, what we are going to show that there is no non-trivial bounded harmonic function in whole of Rn, okay. So, let u from Rn to R, Rn to R um, is harmonic, is harmonic, okay, and bounded. 
is this clear so i am starting with a bounded function which is harmonic on rn okay then u is constant okay so quite clear okay how do i show this so for the proof proof what i do is you fix a x not in rn x not in rn and r positive clear okay right once you do that can you say something like this du at the point x not let's just look at this thing yeah this is less than equals to root n c1 by r to the power n plus 1 integral module over b x not r yeah can i say this if you remember c you see the derivative of u at the point x not can always be bounded by this particular thing right yeah so that is what i am writing here so essentially you see this is always bounded by some constant times 1 by r to the power n plus 1 um, the integral of u over ball okay so this is actually okay one thing i wa want to clarify whenever i am writing um, some function the l1 norm of some function essentially this is a shorthand of writing this clear yeah, this is just a shorthand okay okay so i'm just getting it from the earlier so from the earlier theorem we know that the d of u x not can be written like this right okay now you see this actually says everything here once you do this thing you can just write it i mean if you just u uh, on the ball yeah it has a maxima on the ball i mean you can take a maxima on the ball you can just uh, see u is bounded in whole of rn right okay so the maxima of u in the whole of rn exists so essentially what i can do is i can do this i can write it as root n c1 alpha n by r i will explain to you why i can write it like this maximum of module in rn okay first thing first let's let's understand how we can write all of this x not r mod of u dx let's say yeah this first of all see you are evaluating u on this ball yeah i can always dominate this thing with the maximum of u over rn right here i know that u is bounded in rn so i am just taking that bound here yeah the maximum the upper bound and then i am left out with d of x over b x not r yes and this is what it is maximum of sorry this is module maximum of module over rn see here here what is the integral over uh, the ball of b of x 1 basically integral of 1 over the ball so it is basically the volume of the ball so this is um, alpha n r power n right that is what this is equals to this okay i am just putting it here that is why that r power n is gone okay and alpha n is getting carried here so this is um, this is how this is coming i i hope this is very clear here okay now please understand this thing that i can say that this particular thing this this term goes to zero as r goes to infinity right see here i do not have any restriction this ball this ball this is our whole rn right whole rn that's the x not i'm taking a ball with radius r okay with radius r and in that ball this is happening the gradient Mm, is always dominated by this yeah now you see this is always fixed number i can't change this number yeah all of this is fixed this is constant the only thing which can vary is r because i can take r as big as possible this i am working in the whole rn right yeah and this bound is independent of r this bound is on rn i am working on whole rn i can take r as big as possible right 
so if you take r towards infinity all of this is constant basically and uh, what is going to happen this will go to zero so essentially what is happening is in r n uh, okay in the whole space the gradient of u is going to be zero so the the gradient of u okay um, is identically equals to zero why since x not is arbitrary right since x not is arbitrary see x not is nothing special is there about x not right i mean you can choose any x not and you can choose as bigger ball as possible will be centered at x not no problem so essentially that is saying that gradient of u is zero gradient of u is basically d of u okay we are always using this notation right it is d of u d of 1 u essentially yeah okay so gradient of u is zero what happens if gradient of u is zero it means u is constant it means u is constant okay and we are done so you see this is the liouville property your already known liouville property and this is proved in such a easy way okay so what it is saying essentially so let's a small remark let me put this in the other small remark and we'll end it here so basically it is saying that no non trivial no non trivial okay mm, bounded harmonic function function exists in rn so the important thing is bounded harmonic function huh? there are obviously unbounded harmonic functions in rn but there is no non trivial so basically it can be constant but no non trivial bounded harmonic function in a whole of rn okay so with this we are going to end this lecture